If you enjoy these Reddit stories, please like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts below. Enjoy! I ruined a family reunion. Bit of background. I am a small YouTuber with a small following. I stream and make videos about Roblox and occasionally Fortnite. I have noticed a big gold rush in videos relating to Skibbity Toilet, so I have started to make content using the terms Riz, a Sigma, Giant, Skibbity Toilet to attract a larger audience. Most of these terms I found from YouTube Shorts. I made videos on Fortnite creative maps and the Roblox game Toilet Tower Defense. These have really helped my channel, but at times I dread doing these videos. However, with me using those terms constantly on my streams and videos they have slowly adapted into my vocabulary. Anyways, enough about me. My family on my dad's side has never been close with my mom's side, in fact my mom hates our dad's side. I haven't really talked to my extended family since I moved out, since my mom's side lives in Utah and I just don't really see my dad's side at all. So you could imagine I was quite nervous to see them again as I haven't seen my cousins since they were little. Anyways, we are planned to go to a steakhouse and just have a grand time and catch up. So I got all ready and prepared myself to be passive aggressive if needed. My mom did not come. Anyways. I take my humble ride over to the joint and see my family there. We go to our table and of course my dad and my grandma start catching up however me and my brother are silent and so are our cousins. However we start to warm up after a bit of chit chatting and food going to the table. But for some reason I had this primal urge to tell my brother that I should go riz up the waiter due to her giant. But to be honest she had a giant. My brother takes a weird glance at me before talking to our cousins. I then begin to talk about childhood memories school etc. Then, I finally feel comfortable enough to bring up my career. I finally bring up my job as a content creator and they actually don't react all embarrassed. Most people when I say that cringe. So I keep talking on and on and then I ask them. Do you guys watch Skibbity Toilet? I just live for each new episode. Eh? They pretty much scratch their heads having no idea what it is as they are as normy as it gets. Anyways I blast an episode of Skibbity Toilet. I sing along to the, the music as all people do. They slowly tilt their heads in disgust as I watch with glee. This is where it all goes south. Thinking this is hilarious as most my audience literally dies from laughter when I do it in Fortnite to any Chun-Li skin I see. So when the waiter walks away, I scream GYTT, yell, W is chat, and stand up and hit a jig. However instead of laughter I was met with disgusted faces and dead silence. The waiter, clearly disgusted looks at me with bloodlust. So I respond with I guess I have Sigma Riz. It was dead silent after that and my whole family left. I think I fumbled the whole reunion. Anyways my family haven't really talked to me since. Losing 125 pounds. I have lost a total of 28.8 pounds in 44 days which is 96.2 slash 125 lbs to my goal. I started at 295 and am at 266.2 pounds. I never thought it would be so hard. I have to force myself to eat way less I usually have between 500 and 1000 calories if I eat at all. In fact I fast at least 2 to 3 days a week. Sometimes in a row but often intermittently. Days like today I feel motivated because I see the numbers on the scale drop. Sometimes the water weight adds up and makes the numbers go up. I'm learning to accept it though because I need to stay hydrated. It's a must. I have been in ketosis for 7 weeks now and I'm not sure how much that contributes to my weight loss. I know that walking 5 miles every day is helping me burn calories though and that has a role to play. After my walk I always lose weight whether a lot or a little. I will keep my reddit updated on this journey to assist anyone else with their own goals or to simply find interest in what I'm doing. Leave a like or a follow and check out my account for more stories. Thank you. My ex-husband ghosted me. It's been almost 3 years since my ex-husband more or less ghosted me. When this happened, we, me 26 f him 25 m at the time, were together for 3 years and married for a year and a half. It was a bit of an unorthodox scenario for us, we decided to do the 90 day fiancé visa and get married so we could live together, but we were both very intentional that we wouldn't go through with such a thing unless we were sure in our hearts and to the best of our beliefs that we wanted to get married the right way one day. This was also an expensive venture, our immigration attorney's fees were over $10,000. Well, we got married about three weeks before the pandemic. And it really messed up the already brutal visa processing times. My ex-husband was unable to obtain a work permit for over a year. When he finally did, he took a short contract job in another state, at the company we both used to work at and where we met. He originally only signed on for six weeks, but he extended his contract to 12 weeks once he was over there as he was enjoying it more than expected. I was fine with this and was happy to see he had a sense of purpose again. A few weeks go by and he decides he would really enjoy working there long term and year round. I had no issues with this, as we both didn't like the city we were living in and I held a remote job, so we really did have the freedom to live in whichever state we wanted. We researched the towns and apartments nearby and signed a lease slash paid the deposit. This was at the end of July to move in at the end of August. He was due to be home from the work contract in mid-August and would help get ready for the move. Then strangely, his communication with me ceased. I didn't hear from him for a week. 
I blew up his phone and tried texting and calling him and nothing. Finally, about five days before he is due home, he tells me he isn't coming home. He refused to give me a reason or have a conversation with me. He just literally never came home. He did this just two weeks after I had abandoned our lease, signed a new lease across the country, sold furniture, and made moving arrangements. He wanted to collect his things but I wouldn't let him unless he signed the divorce papers. I didn't want to legally be stuck married to him, especially if he was going back to his home country. He signed, he collected his belongings without making eye contact or saying a single word, and I never heard from him again. The irony is, his green card interview was scheduled right around the time he ghosted me. I had never been ghosted before, or broken up with in general, and I'll be damned if I ever get closure. I have no idea what happened or what went wrong. There were no prior indicators of tension or unhappiness. My perception was we had a healthy and loving relationship. I don't know why I felt compelled to share my story now. Perhaps I have been carrying shame around my failed marriage and the manner in which it dissolved. I have a doctor friend who pulled a dead rotting frog out of an obese person's fat fold. This really obese patient came in to see my friend with an infection of some sort in one of his folds of obese fatty tissue. My doctor friend opened the folds to have a better look, and with forceps he removed a decaying frog. When asked how the frog could have gotten in there the patient explained that he and his wife, also very obese, are trying to conceive a child, and apparently the only way for them to have sex is to float in the pond together behind their house naked, of course. They can only get into position in this manner. Enter the frog. The best guess is that the frog was eating the sweaty smegma, or the little pond critters that were attracted to the sweaty smegma that build up in the fat folds of extremely obese people. Somehow while this obese blob of DNA changed position the poor frog was encapsulated in his new tomb of blubber, suffocated, and began to rot. Eventually the dead little amphibian caused redness, discomfort, and eventually infection of the dad-to-be, which prompted a trip to my friend the doctor. I had to hear the story, and now you have to hear it. I'm sorry. Liking yourself. Liking yourself. There are times when you may think about quitting, but the way you look at yourself determines if you're a winner or a loser. How do you look at yourself? Do you like yourself? Do you think you're worthy? Do you value yourself? These are important questions to ask yourself. These questions will determine how far you're going to get in life. If you don't think you're ever going to get somewhere in life, guess what? You're not. If you don't think you're worthy, then who will? If you think this is all you're ever going to achieve, then you're right. It's the bottom of the barrel for you. Sorry if this sounds harsh, but this is the truth. You first must believe in yourself and know that you can do anything that you set your mind to. I try to tell my girls that all the time. It doesn't matter what their dad says about them, this is his issue, not theirs. It doesn't matter if their friends talk about them. They should know their own self-worth. They should know that they can do anything, that they are smart, beautiful, and kind women who have their whole lives in front of them. Each and every day, I try to reinforce the good in them and hope I am erasing the bad that other people put on them. But no matter how many times I tell them, if they don't believe it, it won't matter. You must stop listening to everyone around you, and most importantly, you have to shut up the voices in your own head. They tell you, you're not smart enough, pretty enough, or good enough. In order to change, you'll have to say it over and over every day if need be for you to start believing it. You need to say you are good enough, smart enough, and that you are perfect in God's eyes or your Creator's eyes, and if He loves you, then you need to love yourself. Once you do that, no one else's opinion will mean anything. You will know your value. Once you know your value, no one will ever tell you otherwise, and then you will demand that respect from others. You won't put up with lying, cheating people because you will know your worth, you won't hang around negative people. You won't cheapen your values to please a boss, friends, family members, or someone you're in a relationship with. You will stand your ground with your head held high and know who you are and whose you are, a child of the Most High God or whatever you believe in. You are worthy, and you will be willing to walk away from anyone or anything that says otherwise. So today, my friends, believe in yourself and love yourself. Believe you can do anything. It's amazing how things will change around you once you change your attitude. It's all up to you to start liking yourself. Be the change you want to see. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment your favorite stories below.